Well, hi there, and this is inside the caravan, and it's a, a beautiful looking caravan. And in the back here, we've got the L-shaped dining area, uh, which is also a double bed. And also you've got the fixed in across the back that lifts up to create that um, double bed. And then this range one sort of works very well for us when the children are much younger. And of course you've got the kitchen area uh, in the middle with your bathroom, your wardrobe, etc. And then in the front, yeah, you've got your double bed arrangement and uh, also a dining area and lounge. Got a nice big hikey window as well. Love the light coming from that. Uh, but today... We've hit a problem. Yes, we purchased this van back in 2006 as a brand new unit. We've kept it and about two seasons ago we noticed a little bit of a bubble in one of the back panels. And uh, uh, we looked into it and the guy who came to service the uh, van, uh, he picked up some high damp uh, meter readings against the back wall here. Uh, he sealed them and that was going into last season and now after having a, a year uh, sort of out and um, it's uh, popped up uh, evidence of more damp even though he tried to seal it for us. So I'll show you where, where it is. If you notice these little bubbles here, these lumps, uh, but if you tap it it's very very soft and we've got it up around here coming down to there. Also on the corner here, and if you push your finger in, it should sound like that, but it is quite dampish. Then the main source is up in the corner here. You can't see it, but I'm pressing against the ply sheeting there, and it's really soft. Uh, but then it's hard just down there, but it extends across here. Also within the cupboard there I could still press it and feel a bit soft there so it's running across here and then coming through to this end so we're about halfway through the back end of the van it's soft here and then all of a sudden it seems to stop about here it's really really solid here again um, but the softness stops about three quarters away across the back of the van now this line I've uh, followed this line all the way through if I came out through the caravan and at that level there, follow it along, and of course it comes out exactly at that point there. I have already made a little bit of investigative jobs and started to remove the speeding. It's where the roof and the back panel meet and they overlap there. Uh, so there was a screw missing there with a slight hole and the ingress uh, from there if you can just pick up on that. So there we are. I've uh, put a plan uh, together and I was very fortunate to find uh, O'Leary's Motorhome on the World Wide Web and uh, they have supplied me with uh, panels, the sort of matching sort of uh, ply panel with a plastic uh, sheet in front, also the sealants and uh, the rubber seal for the rear window. So fair play to them, their service was absolutely uh, top notch, uh, next day delivery and uh, that's now put me in a good position where I can start removing uh, some of the furnishings. I was a bit reluctant to start uh, dismantling everything until I sourced uh, the correct materials and uh, fair play to O'Leary's, I've made a new friend there so uh, their, their service was a number one. So if you were looking to either do a conversion of a van or if you've got uh, jobs uh, in and around the caravan uh, you want to look into repairing or carrying out repairs yourself, yeah, try them out first. Okay, so I better get some uh, tools together. Uh, first of all, I'll need a sort of Phillips head uh, type screwdriver and a little pot to keep all the screws in. And then uh, we'll look at uh, uh, considering removing the panelling. So I'm going to start stripping off now and uh, just marking out some of the fixings on the cupboards so I'll be able to put them back. Um, I'll be using the caravan as the storage as well so all the elements that I take down here I'll store them in front of the caravan. So I've had a quick tidy up, cleared the two bench seats in front of the caravan there and uh, put the awning and a few chairs, a bit of bobs. I thought I'd use the, um, the shower room. There we are. So that'll give me a lot of space now 
to store things in by using the front of the caravan as a bit of storage and uh, put a few things uh, the wife likes to keep out. But if you're wondering what this cable is for, this is I've used this now for the last couple of seasons. It's a small little uh, uh, PV system just to trickle triple charge or trickle charge the uh, leisure battery. I must say it's been a, a good little find that and uh, it's worked well. It's kept my battery up to full charge over the winter because pre in previous years I've uh, lost batteries and they're about 100 quid a, a pop so I'm saving myself uh, the money in the first season. So get get yourself one of those uh, PV type uh, uh, tri trickle chargers. Right, let's get on with removing some of these units. So it's going all right at the moment, taking this shelf off. I collected around there. There's a little hidden screw that came in through behind the curtain there. So you can just see the end coming through, so that's hidden. And now we've uh, exposed most of that, taken the uh, curtains down and uh, taking the end caps off here now. Uh, that's all you needed to do there was just apply a bit of pressure, firm pressure and manoeuvre it off the clip. And then that's uh, exposed those two fixing uh, screws on either side. So remove the cassette uh, blind there. And then we'll be on to the cupboard. So as you can see at the moment, starting to uh, take shape and uh, hopefully we'll remove those cupboards I think we take the door fronts off first. I take the door fronts off first and then I'll lighten them and then uh, just drop the wall cupboards uh, down. Right, so we're taking the doors off the front of the uh, wall cupboards here just to lighten it. You can see a very light frame, the plastic frame inside. Uh, we've got two little connectors there for the helmet light under here. Uh, so we'll disconnect those. Luckily they're just a, a slave uh, push-in connector there. And then once that cupboard's off, we'll then uh, take some measurements so we know exactly where these fittings are here, up there, around here, around the window, etc. So I'll just take some uh, simple measurements there. And as you can see, the rest of the caravan is filling up very quickly. There's some of the tools, the basic tools you'll need. I um, haven't used all of them, but uh, just an easy set of uh, screwdrivers. Um, but there we are. The doors are there, the window blinds and everything else. But now when you're looking back at this uh, end wall, there seems to have uh, picked up a little bit of running water from around the, the window seal as well. Uh, so I think this is a good move. A good move. Let's reseal it. New wall panelling and uh, the van be good for another 14 years. Can't believe it. Put it brand new in 2006 and now it's 2020 and I told myself I was going to sell it a couple of years ago but I couldn't find another van that I uh, liked the layout of. This works so well this layout for us and that's the reason we kept it and of course maybe 14 years of use uh, annually has um, caused the leak to come. You've got to expect it I suppose after 14 years so when you are buying a caravan certainly check around uh, any beadings or joints. Uh, for any leaks. You can buy little damp meters, so use those, or if a friend's got a damp meter, ask them if you can borrow it, and just go around. Also, another way from a previous caravan I had, it was by the door, by the step of the door. That can always be a vulnerable sort of uh, area for damp to come in. So just double check it. Even if it has got a bit of damp, you can repair it, but make sure the price reflects that when you are buying it. Uh, but as you can see, this van still looks good. I don't want to say the mess now, but you know, it's um, got a good arrangement with a large fridge, a grill with the oven as well, a gas hob with the electric uh, ring on it, wardrobe space, and then of course the toilet and shower. So anyway, next step, down this cupboard, undo the connections up there, and then we'll uh, look at the uh, frame around the uh, window. And please, I've um, uh, purchased a new rubber the seal to go around the back window as well. Um, so there we are. You can see there's been a little bit of running water down from this corner here somewhere. Um, I don't think it was a problem. Uh, not as bad as the problem that we are going to address here in this corner. One thing you notice as soon as you start doing work in the caravan, 
go out and adjust the stays make sure it's uh, down solid again uh, the caravan's been on this site now over the winter so the winds have most probably blown it moved it around a little bit so it was a little bit of rock and roll going on here for a, a while so I decided just to reprop it up and it's a bit firmer now so I should be able to walk around and uh, without bouncing around well you might just notice how much brighter it is in the back after we took down the overhead uh, storage cupboard across the back there and they're so much lighter in the back end yeah but of course I thought the damp only came to about three quarters of the way round but having taken the shelf down it's following right and right and right across the edge of the speeding now all the way across uh, so of course when we get to the outside to repair the beading there that's going to have loads of sealant of course i'm going to check the joint internally once we get in between that cavity and make sure that um, we can put some sealant there as well um, but the rest of it the back end's completely finished so these plastic uh, coated uh, ply sheets will need to be replaced and also something i didn't notice until we took down the cupboards there was also some bubbling in the plastic to the left hand corner which is down by there it's very difficult to see maybe on the camera but you can see the bubbles there so water's gone into the ply sheet in and this plastic doesn't breathe so you end up um, it's going to bubble but there we are i'm not going to do any more today i'm going to leave it like that and look at it fresh tomorrow hopefully the weather will be kind to me as well so i'll be able to take the window out remove the black beading and then eventually work on removing uh, the panels uh, but of course what I need to do as well is check the timbers uh, most of the screws are coming out they were brown black rusty sort of color which doesn't uh, stand good for the timber condition of the timber frame behind there so we most probably will have some scary looking scenes tomorrow when I take off the back panel and I bet you it's going to look awful behind there it's going to be black and mold and all sort of rot in the timbers but if that's the case don't worry we'll take it out we'll get some new timbers repair it uh, preserve the tivs on some of the other timbers as well and uh, see what happens but i'm going to leave it now before i start going mad cheers guys bye bye and welcome back to a phase two of uh, uh, the repairs here in the caravan uh, job today we're going to remove uh, the rubber seals around the window the catches etc I'm going to retain I'm going to retain the gray uh, plastic bit in the middle of the rubber because that didn't come with the new strip didn't come with the rubber so I'm going to retain that and remove that very carefully There we are, so I've just taking a closer look, uh, removing these staples. As you can see, the ply sheeting underneath this plastic uh, coated ply is totally saturated. Uh, but good news, the timber going around here, uh, there's still plenty of good heart in it, so I'll have to allow that uh, opportunity to dry out. Uh, but I've got a huge saturation around this uh, part here. And then there's other areas, are pretty firm. So I'm pretty happy with that. But that's the telltale. I'm not sure if you can see these lumps, but you can press that and it just sounds so flat and dead compared with the... There we are. The timber on the bottom part of the window. See, it's quite dry and firm there. But it's on the top where you can see where the ingress water's been and the ply's all laminated. And uh, it's easier to take off uh, the damp bits. Um, with uh, this being very well fixed there, very difficult to get it off but we'll have to work on that and uh, remove it as you can see this will come off quite well I think there we are, we're just removing all the staples that go around the frame of the window there hold the panelling in let's see how we get on now with uh, taking it off
like we're about five minutes in. So our polystyrene is well secured to the uh, the wall board. So chances are we'll need to secure by some uh, polystyrene as well to fit in between the gaps. But you can see how wet uh, there's water. Although we've had a, a long period of dry weather recently now, that has decayed as well. So it looks like we'd be replacing some of the timbers in the frame here as well. It's only very thin, very light timbers. And as you can see, the actual nail fixing in there our oh, staple fixing has also uh, rusted through. So some timbers are all right, but uh, they're still uh, soaking wet. There's no ventilation to dry in between the uh, external skin and the internal skin. And then of course, there you've got this plastic coating on in front of the uh, ply sheet, which doesn't allow anything to breathe here. So maybe replacing it or incorporating a vent or something as well. But no, never mind, another sort of 10 minutes, we should have a, a big progress on this and uh, remove a lot more of the uh, the old ply. And I think this stuff is coming off with it as well, the polystyrene. So we'll have to source some new polystyrene to then and again. Look, totally saturated. I don't know if you can, that's focused. But you can see where that is soaking wet, but it's just been running, gathering on this top rail. Now this is where the window frame was and it's just gone all the way across there. And that's such a tight fit there that the water's finding its way through with a couple of reaction then. As you go down, it's not so bad. And you can see inside the cavity there, that's the back panel of the caravan, the back wall of the caravan externally. There's a void around the light clusters, a little bit of polystyrene, firm polystyrene there to give it a bit of body, uh, firmness to the body. Uh, but yeah, so it's a difficult job now, as you can see, the ply is dry here and fixed to the polystyrene. So I think uh, another purchase will need to be a sheet of uh, polystyrene as well. So the soft bits are coming off really easy. Now we're coming down to the harder bits, uh, the dry bits. So they're coming off in small little chips. So this might take a little bit longer now. Uh, and then these are the type of tools we've been using. Just to help it off. Very careful around the detail you want to keep. Slight little taps. And then uh, we're just chipping away on some of the bits. And then we'll have to leave this timber sort of to dry out before we can do any repairs. So these are the tools we've been using. This scraper and a hammer just to tap it in behind the uh, polystyrene and the board. So what I've done here now, I'm removing this beading strip that joins the bottom skirt level up to the main back wall. So removing this very carefully because I want to reuse this later as well. But you can see the join between the, the skirting board and the wall board there. So this is a, a nice little beading strip that covers that joint. It's not too bad. There is a little bit of moisture here, but the timber still feels very strong. Very good. I know it's quite a, a depressing uh, sight seeing a caravan in this condition. Uh, but I'm a very positive, optimistic type of person. So this is all good. At the moment, this is all good. Trust me. And the tool I'm using here to remove uh, this little edging strip is a very firm chisel. So be very careful not to slip, but you can use it to just go behind and just between the fittings and slowly you can just prise it away like that. So that job, just do it with a bit of caution and care. Just come back in after a little bit of lunch to have a look at the uh, caravan and the job in hand. So we're just going to tidy up, try and get as much of the little bits off uh, the rest of the timbers. And I am amazed within an hour how much this has already dried up. This was all running earlier this morning and the timbers are already starting to dry up. And uh, yeah, we've got to prep all this and I'm going to go outside and start oh, removing that. Very careful. And because uh, we've had... Le a bit, of, a bit of an entry there at that point, at this area here, and also right at the other end, there was a little bit of an ingress around here as well. So, these sort of areas are very vulnerable. I think it's the jointing area there, so I'm gonna take care now to remove that strip. Thank you, Mr. Tristan. So, there we are, I've removed the 
the screws, remove the screws from there now, stainless steel screws, they were looking all pretty good. Uh, then you can see these holes where there were no screws, so I may use those on the way to refix this. Actually, there's uh, the other holes that were not used first time round. So there we are, we'll remove this carefully now without buckling it. So I'll have to just release it, get something behind that. Right. To help remove this, I've been pushing this through and keeping a bit of pressure on the beading and it sort of helps to cut through the sealant which is a very good sealant. I've only got the, towards the end there, not much left to finish. And then I'm going to clean uh, surfaces on the roof of the caravan and also remove the sealant from the actual track itself, the beading. This putty seal is really difficult to scrape off, but you have to be so careful if you are using a blade so you're not sort of scratching in to the aluminium surface of the roof there. Um, I just found just rubbing it with your finger and get a bit of a snot of this uh, rubber putty into a ball and then flick it off. So it's taken longer than I expected, but there we are. We'll try and clean all this surface up and um, be able then to reconsider how to seal it and to fix it to the, the roof to the back panel. Make sure that's well sealed in before we start doing any further repairs internally. What I have noticed uh, when I was taking off uh, the beading uh, joint here, there was gaps where the silicon wasn't straight through and you can see there's water ingress coming in in that type of area. So it's quite important to study uh, these uh, joints and uh, to see if there's any water been penetrating in. And looking at it, you can see where water must have gone into there, filled in the back of this, and then capillary reduction in underneath then. So there was a couple of those where the uh, putty sealant and wasn't a continuous uh, seal across, and you can see the outline. So that's quite important uh, for you to show. So you, so you really survey the area around the sealant uh, area, and uh, this area here I'll be taking particular care of as well when I'm resealing it up. But I'm still working on trying to remove this stuff. It's bloody amazing stuff. It's good stuff, isn't it? You can see the channels full of muck where water's been flowing, running into it. Also. Uh, that little area there where water's been connecting uh, down and flowing around. So there we are. We'll clean that up nice and tight. Yeah. I'm trying to clean out this putty off the beading. I found my thumb best by rolling it up into a massive so there we are. Just looking at this job now before I say uh, goodbye until the next time. Um, just go straight away to it. As soon as you establish, you've got a little bit of damp in the caravan. Uh, don't sit on it. Don't let it get on to another year. Uh, it'll just deteriorate very, very quickly. And a lot of the deterioration you're not going to see until you've sort of exposed it, open it up to see what's there. So it is quite a scary image when you expose it, but it's just what you've got to expect. Um, but as soon as you've uh, exposed it, it dries within the same day. A lot of this dampness has definitely dried up with me. And um, if I had a damp meter moisture, I'm sure the content of the uh, dampness in the timbers would be already noticeably down. Uh, but don't be uh, afraid to take a project like this on yourselves. Uh, it's a few basic tools and uh, you've got to have a little bit of basic skills as well yourself. Um, don't rush the job, you know, when you've got sort of sharp edges and you're going up against close against things. Just take your time and uh, things will come loose or they, you just move things in slowly and slide a blade underneath and pop it off or something. So don't rush a job like this, um, uh, but the prepping takes longer than stripping. Okay, cheers, this is it now. Until the next time. Thanks.